During the Napoleonic Wars in 1804 and 1805, Napoleon wanted to seize the English Channel for just one week in order to place a French army on British soil. In March 1805, Captain Sir Richard Strawn was posted to command the 80-gun Caesar serving in the Channel Fleet, and was also put in command of a squadron of three other ships of the line and four frigates in the Bay of Biscay, serving under Lord Horatio Nelson. Sir Richard's squadron, prior to the Battle of Trafalgar, had been ordered to intercept and engage Captain Almond's Franco-Spanish Roche Fort Squadron. As a side note, we know Sir Richard pronounced his surname Strawn, and not Strachan. This is from a doggerel verse printed in 1809 after the failed Walt Turin expedition in Flanders. Sir Richard Strawn was in command of the naval forces and Lieutenant General John Pitt, 2nd Earl of Chatham was placed in command of the ground forces. Chatham was more a politician than a soldier. There were rumours that he had only been appointed because he was close to King George III. This was probably untrue, but Chatham was almost totally inexperienced and notoriously lazy. Indeed, his nickname was, quote, the late Lord Chatham, unquote, as he was virtually always late for meetings and engagements. For Sir Richard, he had never participated in an amphibious operation like the one required for Walt Turin. In 1810, Parliament held an inquiry into the disaster. Chatham did not help his cause by submitting a narrative to the King exculpating himself and blaming all delays on Strawn and the Navy. His reputation was destroyed and he was forced to resign his government post. Sir Richard Strawn got off more lightly, but neither he nor Chatham was actively placed in command again. Although both men shared blame for the expedition's failure at the time, the expedition itself almost certainly failed as the two commanders had conflicting needs and necessities. Any student of military history will agree there should have been one person in central command. Regardless, the verse is as follows. The Earl of Chatham, with his sword drawn, stood waiting for Sir Richard Strawn. Sir Richard, longing to be at them, stood waiting for the Earl of Chatham. Five years earlier, after the Franco-Spanish defeats at Trafalgar on 21 October 1805, the remnants of Napoleon's fleet retreated, and scattered seeking safety to seaward. Although Sir Richard Strawn did not see action at Trafalgar, he would serve a prominent role in the Battle of Cape Portugal. On 2 November 1805, at 2300, or 11 p.m. at night, Strawn's squadron spotted six large French ships in chase of a British frigate in the northwest making signals. The Caesar commanded by Strawn, made sail to join her before night. She was subsequently followed by the ships in his squadron consisting of the Caesar, his 80-gun flagship, the 74-gun Hero, the 74-gun Corrigio, the 74-gun Namur, and the frigates Bellona, Aeolus, and Santa Margarita. The frigate being chased was one of the first ships Strawn commanded much earlier in his career, the HMS Phoenix, now commanded by Captain Baker. Baker informed Sir Richard that his ship was spotted in the Bay of Biscay, and was given chase by the Franco-Spanish Roche for squadron. Upon this news, Strawn and his crew cheered. Indeed, much has been made of Strawn's famed impulsiveness. Although an extrovert and popular among his men, Sir Richard was famous during his career for his ungovernable temper and violent cursing. This eventually earned him the nickname of Mad Dick among his men, and he nonetheless remained a sought-after commander. As a result of this first exuberant dispatch from the Phoenix, Sir Richard informed the Admiralty that he was giving chase to the Franco-Spanish Roche for squadron. Sir Richard shortly thereafter became known among his contemporaries as the delighted Sir Dicky. Sir Dicky, as he was called among his friends, instructed Captain Baker of the HMS Phoenix to inform the rest of the ships of the line astern to follow him, as he meant to engage what he thought to be the Rochefort squadron directly. Sir Richard immediately bore away in the Caesar for the purpose of attacking these six ships making all the signals he could to indicate his movements to the other ships in his squadron. The moon enabled Strawn to see the enemy bear away in line abreast and closely formed. Unfortunately, he lost sight of them when the moon set, and was obliged to reduce sail as the Hero, Corrigio, and Aeolus were the only ships he could see. They continued to steer east northeast all night and in the morning observed the British frigate, Santa Margarita, near them. On the 3rd of November 1805, 
At 9 o'clock in the morning Strawn's squadron discovered the enemy consisting of four ships in a line in the northeast and all under sail. Having been well prepared and ready, Sir Richard's squadron, minus the Namur, Santa Margarita, Phoenix and Bellona, who had not yet caught up from the previous evening, gave chase and came up fast. That evening, Strawn observed three sail astern. It was the frigates Phoenix, Santa Margarita, and the Revolutionaire. The slower 74-gun ship of the line Namur was also successfully notified and on the way. The Phoenix's Captain Baker had successfully delivered Strawn's orders. Frigates being much faster than the larger ships of the line, Strawn ordered the frigate Phoenix to assist the Santa Margarita in leading the squadron up to the enemy. At daylight on the 4th of November 1805, the squadron was very near enemy ships. The Santa Margarita, in an attempt to force battle, begun, in a very gallant manner according to Sir Richard, to fire upon the enemy's rear, and it was soon joined by the Phoenix. Off Cape Portugal in the northwest of Spain, and shortly before noon, the French finding an action unavoidable, began to take in their sails, and formed in a line bearing on the starboard tack. Strawn matched the move, and communicated his intentions to his squadron's captains that his ship, the Caesar would attack the centre and rear. Sir Strawn now attacking with the 80-gun Cesar, 74-gun Hero, 74-gun Corrigio, and the frigates Phoenix, Santa Margarita, Revolutionaire, and Aeolus, began the battle at noon. In short time, the enemy vessels attacked, which almost immediately made the action close in general. Sir Richard tacked again, and was shortly thereafter joined by the 74-gun Namur, having caught up just in time for the battle. Sir Richard directed the Namur by signal to engage the enemy. After three and a half hours of action, Sir Richard Strawn described in a letter to the Admiralty, quote, the enemy having fought admirably, and not surrendering until their ships were unmanageable. Unquote. It was not until after the battle that Sir Richard and his squadron learned the four French ships of the line they engaged were not the Rochefort squadron, but rather four ships of the line that escaped from the Battle of Trafalgar, and who were in the process of seeking safety when they spotted and attempted to engage the frigate HMS Phoenix in the Bay of Biscay. The four French ships were the Scipion, Formidable, Doug Adrawin, and Mont Blanc, now commanded by Rear Admiral Dumanoir Lapelli. In another letter sent to the Admiralty Office, dated the 8th of November 1805, Sir R. J. Strawn provides an update to the previous communique. In it, he presents a casualty report of the engagement, and expresses his great surprise that there were so few British casualties. He explains, quote, I can only account for it from the enemy firing high, and we closing suddenly. Unquote. Regarding the French losses, Sir Richard states, Quote, I have as yet no correct account of the loss of the enemy, or of their number of men. Unquote. He continues to provide the following information. The formidable was a French third-rate ship of the line mounting 80 guns. It was commanded by Captain Letelier and was the flagship of Rear Admiral Belly. The formidable suffered 65 casualties during the Battle of Trafalgar. During the Battle of Cape Portugal. Only the foremast was left standing and the French rear admiral himself was wounded. The Scipion was a French 74-gun ship of the line commanded by Captain Beringer. During the Battle of Cape Portugal, the Scipion was totally dismasted and had 111 killed and wounded. The Doug Adrian was commanded by Captain Tofet and was a French ship of the line carrying 74 guns. It suffered a few casualties in the Battle of Trafalgar. However, during the Battle of Cape Portugal, the Doug Adrian was totally dismasted. Captain Tofet was killed and the second captain wounded. All other senior officers were either killed or wounded, and the ship herself was eventually surrendered by an ensign to Sir Richard. The Mont Blanc was commanded by Captain Villagres and was a French third-rate ship of the line of 74 guns that escaped from Trafalgar without any casualties. During the Battle of Cape Portugal, only the foremast was left standing. It had a crew complement of 700, of which 63 killed and 96 grievously wounded. Sir Richard writes, A list of the killed and wounded in His Majesty's ships under mention, in action with the French squadron on the 4th of November 1805. He further provides a listing of the killed and wounded. Caesar, 4 killed, and 25 wounded. Hero, 10 killed, and 51 wounded.
aboard the Corrijo, 1 killed, and 13 wounded. On the Namur, 4 killed, and 8 wounded. On the frigate Santa Margarita, 1 was killed, and 1 wounded. Revolutionaire had 2 killed, and 6 wounded. Phoenix, 2 killed, and 4 wounded. Aeolus, 3 wounded. Sir Richard Strawn's squadron suffered only 24 killed and 111 wounded, totaling 135 casualties. In a letter published in the London Gazette Extraordinary, on Monday, November the 11th to the Honourable William Cornwallis Admiral, Sir Richard wrote, I have returned thanks to the captains of the ships of the line and frigates, and they speak in high terms of approbation of their respective ships' companies. If anything could add to the good opinion I had already formed of the officers and crew of the Caesar, it is their gallant conduct in this day's battle. The enemy have suffered much, but our ships not more than is to be expected on these occasions. Again, in a general memorandum written on the Caesar while at sea on November 6, and later published in the London Gazette on the 12th, Sir Richard wrote, Having returned thanks to Almighty God for the victory obtained over the French squadron, the senior captain begs to make grateful acknowledgments for the support he has received from the ships of the line and the frigates, and requests the captains will do him the honour to accept his thanks, and communicate to their respective officers and ships' companies how much he admires their zealous and gallant conduct. Sir Richard carried his four prizes safely back to Gibraltar and they were all added to the British Navy. The formidable, renamed the Brave, the 74-gun Dugate Rowin renamed Implacable. The Scipion and Formidable under their own names. The Implacable and Scipion were the only ships that afterwards went to sea. Strawn's action gave the final blow to Napoleon's invasion plans, and he was promoted to Rear Admiral on the 9th of November 1805. On the 29th of the ensuing January, Sir Richard, for his conduct in the action of the 4th of November, became invested with the Order of the Bath and, about the same time the Rear Admiral and the captains and officers who served under him received the thanks of Parliament. Sir Richard was voted a pension of £1,000 a year. Gold medals were also distributed, and the first lieutenants of the ships of the line are believed to have been made commanders. In 1810, Sir Dicky was granted the freedom of the City of London. An interesting story is told regarding Sir Richard's arrival back in Plymouth, England, after the Battle of Cape Portgal. Sir Richard Strawn brought into Plymouth the four sail of the line which he had captured after their escape from Trafalgar. He made his appearance one night at the theatre, when a nymph in the slips called out, How are you Sir Dicky? I wish you joy of your good fortune. There being no reply to this apostrophe, the same voice continued, Oh, I suppose you're too proud to speak to an old acquaintance now, because you have taken four sail of the line. After the war had come to an end, Napoleon was taken captive and held in England for a period of time. In a newspaper dated Sunday, August 16, 1815, quote, On Thursday he, Napoleon Bonaparte, gratified the spectators with his appearance frequently on the poop and gangway, on which occasions the British, as well as the French officers, stood uncovered and apart. One of his officers intimating to him, that Sir Richard Strawn was in a barge alongside. Bonaparte instantly took off his hat, and bowed to Sir Richard with a smile. Unquote. Sir Dicky was a flawed man, like us all. However, he was generally popular among his men, was an accomplished naval commander well respected amongst his peers and superiors, and respected and feared by his enemies. Even today, Sir Richard's brilliant tactics and manoeuvres at the Battle of Cape Portgal are studied not only in the Royal Navy, but at the United States Naval Academy, Annapolis. This documentary is presented by the Clan Strachan Charitable Trust in Scotland, and the Clan Strachan Society USA. If you enjoyed this wee film, please consider joining the Society at www.clanstrachan.org and smash the subscribe button below to be notified of any future productions. Have yourself a bonny day.